This video is going to be about something that I've been thinking about a lot lately, and that's the golden age that has come before us. And maybe there's been multiple golden ages before us, but it really is true that there's nothing new under the sun. And all the way back when it was said that nothing was new under the sun, I think that everything on earth had more or less already been exhausted by that point, and even things like computers had already existed at times in the past. And yeah, I really do believe that, that things like computers come and go, and I don't think that it's really as spectacular as people may think. Anyways, what I've been thinking about in particular are how cathedrals themselves are technology, and that there were extremely advanced people in times past. And I'm not talking about aliens. I don't believe in aliens. We live under the firmament. I'm just talking about there were eras in times past that were way more advanced than us today in all aspects. And their society had such different... They favored such different things. And they, they really wanted things to be real. That... Many people today even feel that way. We People see the appeal of natural things, things that aren't plastic or with computer chips. Anyways, I believe that the cathedrals are very advanced sound technology, and I think that they are built primarily for healing, worshiping music. And the buildings themselves, I think it's obvious that it's it's a piece of technology to make sound as good as it can be. And why would you want to just do it digital? It's cheesy to walk into a, a rectangular prism, small church with, you know, the single chairs spaced out, and then the pastor puts on a little Christina Aguilera microphone, and every, and there's TVs in there. Everybody knows that's cheesy. What do all the electromagnetic things... How does that affect the spiritual realm? The Who knows what type of interference is going on when you have... Everybody has a cell phone in their pocket. You have all sorts of TVs and microphone and wireless technology going on. Compared to the purity of a building made out of stone that is constructed in a way that amplifies the sound and makes it sound so much more beautiful. This, I'll point out here why I'm thinking about this, because I think it's hilarious. It's a little discouraging for people who first start learning an instrument, because you'll never sound like a professional. You won't even get close to the sound, and it's because they're either playing in a really nice venue with great acoustics, or they're, more often than not, what they're doing is they're pumping up the post-production. It's hilarious how often I'll go to a, a video, and they'll be, <laughs> the video is them outside on a windy day, and it sounds like they're playing inside of a cathedral. <laughs> and people are, it's one of those things, you can't see the forest for the trees, and it happens so frequently that people don't notice when it's there. They notice when it's not there, and then they assume that it's bad. And that's going to discourage a lot of people. They'll be like, oh, I never sound, I can never sound like this. Well, yeah, because you're not in a studio with post-processing, or you don't have access to a tech like playing inside of a cathedral. Not, not all of us can go practice in a cathedral. You sound amazing, though. It. This is the point. Uh, people are just wowed by reverb. And that's basically what cathedrals are. They are reverb technology that takes live music and makes it sound phenomenal. You can't compare it. It's So I'm, I'm an amateur musician. And if I just take my raw audio and I make videos, it's fine. Like, it's... It's not horrible. I'm, I'm always getting better. And anyways, if I take my audio, though, and I add like a cathedral level of reverb, people are like wowed by it. They're like, oh, man, that's so crazy. And I didn't do anything. It's just technology. And today, obviously, the reverb that I added 
is just fake digital. To bring it back to why I know cathedrals are advanced technology, it's harder to build a cathedral than it is to make a digital uh, reverb effect or to create like an echo chamber in a studio. That's a piece of technology. It's not as impressive as a cathedral, which does it in reality. You can just be there and it's real. It's physical. There was a really advanced people all over the earth that they had great sensibilities and they wanted things to be real. And that these are the result. So that's the gist of it. These are basically reverb technology for healing music. Healing music, spiritual music. The reason that you know that they knew what they were doing, it wasn't just, they sell the dumbest things. Oh, people were just like being competitive to build really tall things. No, these, these cathedrals are perfectly planned out to, for acoustic purposes. They, I mean, I'm going to stop saying it after this. In my opinion, it's clear that it is a piece of musical technology and worship, uh, a worship place. But really, I, I think that the fact people are gathering there is like secondary. It's just, it's all about the music, I think, the cathedrals and the sound. Because of these, they prove that they know about the, the sound connection. I'm sure that a lot of people have seen this type of stuff. Somatics. I don't know. I haven't researched it a lot, but when you visualize sound waves, it shows the same type of patterns that we see on the stained glass windows. So in my opinion, that proves that whoever constructed these things knew exactly what they were doing. If I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. I think that the hidden truth to the statement is that it is literal. And see here that they're gatekeeping. They're trying to say, don't take this literally. Of course, Newton wasn't literally standing. Yes, he was. Because in the Bible, it clearly states that the Nephilim came down. I think that there were computers really early on. And the technology technology was probably gatekept and used to make like fantastical idols like animatronics. I think that animatronics probably, I think Nephilim probably had animatronics because they probably understood computers. But the point is, Newton knew about the giants. Giants are part of the Bible. Newton clearly would know that the Bible had giants in it. And he probably knew about the whole history resets and uh, how societies have come and gone and we're never getting back there. I think that technology wise, things probably peaked when, whenever these cathedrals were built, that's probably when technology was peaking. But I think that they just had very nice refined sensibilities and they probably left computers to just automate things. And, um, who knows what type of technology they had. The, it seems obvious that they were doing things with the roofs, like the roofs were generating the electricity for the buildings. I don't know. Uh, just to point out, I think that a big point of the cathedrals were for healing. You feel it in your body. It, it reverberates through your body when these pipe organs, do you know the expression pulling all the stops out? It's from on a pipe or organ, they can when they pull all the lever, all the stops out, that means they're letting the air through like as many pipes as they really ever do at once. That's when the cathedral is just like blasting and you can feel it in your body. Who knows? And I think that it's very possible that they knew about healing vibrations and could get into all sorts of conspiracies about pitch. I mean, I'm going to get it, get at that in a little bit. I don't think things like gut strings are low tech because there were time periods where they would use gut strings and metal strings at the same time. And it's not that one is superior to the other. I just think that people had very refined taste and they wanted the sound. Everything today is flat. It, it doesn't matter where you grow up. Let's say you want to learn how to play flute when you grow up. It doesn't matter where you're born, you're playing the silver bohem flute, and you're only learning how to play that. And you're playing at 
equal temperament and you're playing at a set at 440 hertz or about all over the earth it's so flatlined today and there was so much more variation in times past they played more in tune in times past people today don't even they don't even really study for the most part different tuning systems different temperaments today they just take all the notes and they equally spread them apart and it does allow you to play in in all the keys but there's ways to tune where you can mostly play in all the keys but it's more pure in the keys that you really want to play in most of the time. Anyways, historically in informed performance is rather new. We're really downgraded today. And only recently have people taken old music and been like, hey, maybe we should actually play this music how it was intended. And it sounds better. And just because something's old doesn't mean it's worse or lower technology. These are just things that you can look into. I don't think that these are low tech flutes. I don't look at a silver flute. A silver flute looks kind of more like a flashy thing than this. This looks very refined. Who's to say that this is lower technology because it's made out of wood? It's just probably the preferred medium to make woodwinds out of wood. Shocker. It's probably just the preferred material. And so what I have to say about this is if you're going to make a if you're going to go buy a baroque an in, an instrument to play baroque music or an instrument to play renaissance music generally speaking this isn't always the case but generally speaking what you're actually getting is you you're getting a, an expert flute maker to do an exact copy of a historical flute that still exists because that was peak technology because these there you can't improve upon it in my opinion and i don't think it's because they they didn't have they didn't have access to other flutes i just think that they had different sensibilities and that these were people that really they really knew what they liked and it wasn't electronic stuff i mean even today so i'll just say me this stuff appeals to me. This stuff appeals to all sorts of people today. I have access to technology. I could go out and buy a, a flute made out of metal, but something appeals to me about a, a woodwind flute made out of wood. So anyways, I just think that people often have a very bad assumption about something that is old. They just think because it's old, it's lower tech. I don't agree with that. This just goes into the what I said about, I find it very unfortunate that it doesn't matter where you're born, if you want to play flute, you're learning the same thing. It shouldn't be like that. If you're born in China, you should be learning Chinese flutes. If you're born in America, I don't, we should have our own flutes. And people used to, pitch used to vary wildly in the Baroque era. It, for history, I take everything with a grain of salt. I believe that I mean, I guess I'll get to what I think about the Baroque era. But anyways, they actually were better at knowing tunings in times past. And they there was more variance from country to country. And we kind of have that today. But it's totally abandoned for just the NWO, one world... Uh, society. Everybody learns the same thing. Uh, just a funny thing that I think is some of the best Sakuhachi players are just Americans because Japanese just don't learn their country and it's a beautiful flute. It's very difficult to play and it's just about abandoned by the Japanese people and I think it's because well if they're going to learn flute they go learn a silver flute. Okay, so I'm basically done. I'm just going to read because there is one possibility. I'm open to this possibility. I don't know the truth. All truths shall be revealed. I don't know. I don't think it makes a difference when it comes to salvation. So I don't let it, let it really bother me too much. One second. Okay. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. 
And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So I think that we are either right here. I think it's very possible. I would love to be a part of this. Part of me thinks that I could be a part of this. So I, I'm not, I'm, I'm honestly not one to believe that the millennial reign of Christ has already happened, but I think it's possible. So I think it's one or two things. I think one, the cathedrals are left over from the Nephilim, and that's when technology and society and uh, artistic sensibilities peaked. And that's that's one possibility. Or all of that stuff is from the millennial reign of Christ. And I so why that could be possible is because most of the great works are related to Jesus. So I think that that would be kind of one point. If I'm going to say, okay, the, the millennial reign has already happened, gets a point for this one, I think it would be the abundance of amazing, beautiful, artistic work centered around Jesus. So, but it does have like a Vatican flair to it. So I don't... Uh, Maybe it's possible that a lot of art has just been, like, changed in order to pass it off as... I don't know. I'm just throwing out ideas. Anything's possible at this point, and I don't think salvation changes either way. The path to salvation is always through Jesus Christ. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. One thing though here, I mean, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. I wouldn't say that we're very populated right now. So, uh, but who knows? I mean, maybe it's like, it is a big meme in the media of like constructing these clone armies where the dark force is just like cloning massive amounts of people. So I could see that happening. Well, this was a fun video for me to do. I hope you enjoyed. God bless everyone.